Now that we've seen what the parables are, I want us to see what the parables are meant to accomplish because there's a major purpose behind them. These are stories with intent. They're designed to challenge our deepest assumptions about life, about God, about ourselves, and about other people. And yet their power is found in how unassuming they are. They're compelling enough to draw us in, only to surprise us with a forceful conviction which forces us to make a decision about how we see ourselves, God, others, and the world around us. Someone once described prophetic preaching as the act of comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable. And to some degree, that's what the parables do. They comfort and they convict. And the condition of our hearts and our receptivity to the Holy Spirit often determines which side of that double-edged sword we feel. We not only read the parables, the parables read us. They always have. You may not be aware of it, but parables were actually common in the ancient world. They didn't begin with Jesus. In fact, scholars have many examples of parables in other countries in the ancient Near East. And there are at least 10 parables in the Old Testament that are similar to the parables of Jesus. One of my favorite parables in the Old Testament shows us what parables are meant to do. It's in 2 Samuel chapter 11 and 12. There, the prophet Nathan confronted King David over his sin with Bathsheba. Remember, David was God's choice to be king over Israel because he was humble and faithful and he willingly and faithfully obeyed God. But after he had been king for a while, he began to take his power and status for granted. And one day, he abused his position by calling for his beautiful neighbor named Bathsheba. She was the wife of one of his most loyal soldiers. He called for her, they brought her to him, and he lay with her and she became pregnant. Now, instead of confessing, he plotted a cover-up that resulted in killing her husband and taking her to be his wife. And for a moment, it looked like he got away with it. But then God sent a prophet named Nathan to confront him. Now, Nathan could have walked right in and said, David, this is wrong, and this is why it was wrong. But instead, Nathan chose to tell him a story, a very specific story meant to bypass David's defenses and hit him straight in the heart. As a young boy, David had been a shepherd. So Nathan was very specific in choosing to use a lamb as the object in his story. He told the story of a rich man who had many sheep and cattle, and the story of a poor man who only had one little lamb whom he loved like a daughter. The lamb even shared his food and drank from his cup and slept in his arms. Just think of a beloved family pet. When a traveler then came to town to visit the rich man, the rich man decided not to butcher one of his own animals, but instead he took the lamb from the poor man and slaughtered it for the feast. This story told by Nathan enraged David. Now, if the purpose of a parable is to make you feel something, Nathan nailed it. David was so angry that he demanded that the man who did this should pay for the lamb four times over and should even die for his sin. Still blind to the fact that the story was about himself, David asked Nathan for the identity of this cruel man. Nathan then hit David with the twist and the plot line. You are the man, he said. David was convicted in his sin and repented in humility. Think about it for a moment. What if Nathan had simply gone to David and said, what you did is wrong? Would David have become defensive? Would he have lied to cover it up? Would he have had Nathan killed for having the audacity to speak against him? We don't know, but because Nathan chose to confront him with a parable, an indirect yet intentionally crafted 
story, he was able to break through David's pride and self-delusion and wake him up to the truth of his own sin. You see, this is what parables are meant to do. They're designed to surprise us and stun us with the truth. Each one has a shock and awe moment that's meant to confront the deepest parts of us. And not for the sake of making us feel guilty. These subversive stories are all about transforming us for the glory of God. 